everyone, welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 26, and we've got some, some cool topics this week. Uh, one of them, though, the one we're starting out with, has me a little hot and bothered right now. Yeah. I was actually yeah. going to do a separate YouTube video on it, but I ran out of time, which means that might be why you're seeing this episode of the podcast, this, this part of it, come out sooner than Monday, uh, because I really want to get this out the door while the news is hot. Hot. So, EA, oh, Electronic Arts, <laughs> oh, Electronic Arts, that unprecedented partnership, Oh yeah. for those that remember back in the Wii U days, the unprecedented partnership. Well, today, they released a list of games that they're going to have available at their EA Play, which when we were at... At E3 last year, that's an outdoor thing they did, yep. which yep. was really confusing, and we tried to play Madden at oh, it, and sure. Madden was apparently not in it, or was somewhere, and we couldn't find it. There was no yeah. directions on where anything was. We randomly walked into an arcade, totally not listed as an arcade anywhere, no yeah, signs, right? yeah. so you get inside, oh, and there's a party on the other side. No signs indicating any of this. <laughs> right. No maps, up, no directions. We went out to the A thing, and then we ended up finding it back in back the, inside, yeah, the, ma- the main area. The Microsoft area. It yeah. was, I don't even know what was going on. It was... Anyways, it was still cool. Yeah. I just hope they have, like, maps and stuff. So, they're going to have a whole bunch of stuff playable there. And, you know, they're going to have the new Star Wars Battlefront. They're going to have Madden, of course, NBA Live, Need for Speed, Sims, Battlefield 1, uh, and The Name of Zar, which I assume some DLC. Uh, they're going to have new content for Galaxy of Heroes, Titanfall 2, NFL Mobile, NBA Live Mobile, yada, yada, yada. But... For all we know, none of that's coming to Switch. So, who cares, right? Well, one yeah. game is coming to Switch. Has been confirmed for Switch since the announcement back in January. Even really before that. FIFA. Mm-hmm. So, they have FIFA 18 listed as being there. But you know what else they have listed as being there? EA Sports FIFA on Nintendo Switch. As a separate listing from FIFA 18. So, Oh, no. Let's go over what this means, oh, folks. Oh, no. Oh, no. One, it means, no, Nintendo Switch is not getting the proper FIFA 18. Two, it means Nintendo Switch is not even probably getting a current-gen version of FIFA. It's probably a last-gen port, possibly even a port of the Vita version from years back, uh, which wasn't that good, and with updated rosters and crappy visuals that are not going to be representative of what the Switch can actually do because EA doesn't care about providing any sort of um, development team to actually find out what the Switch is capable of. Right. So it's going to be some mobile version. It might even be a, a straight-up port of the of the mobile phone version, for all we know. On top of that, in the past when EA did this, because they did this with FIFA and Madden, which, by the way, Madden hasn't confirmed and might not be coming at all. So FIFA and Madden came to Wii U in its first year. And if you are a Wii U owner, you will quickly remember that those were last-gen version ports that just had updated roster. We're missing all the new features. And on top of that, EA used those games as reasons as to why people don't want to buy their games on Nintendo platforms. They said, oh, look, we gave them Madden and FIFA, and no one bought it. So we, there's obviously not an audience for our games. And here is where we get into the great conundrum. Because everyone's excited for a full console FIFA 18 portable. But that's not what anyone's getting. You probably got now, yeah. again, we haven't seen it. Maybe right. maybe for some reason they don't want to officially announce it's FIFA 18, but it really is FIFA 18. I and mean, we end up having all our fears put the rest. But chances are no, because they haven't given proper FIFA treatment to a Nintendo system since the GameCube days, maybe. Yeah. It's been a long time since there was an on-par FIFA game. There's always been, oh, we got to have the Wii Play version of it that's all arcade like that nobody wants because they're trying to buy a sports simulation game in FIFA. <laughs> FIFA is a sports yeah, right, simulation yeah. brand. Not an arcade brand, okay? Yeah, no. Like, like NBA Playgrounds that just came out. Clearly an arcade brand, clearly different from NBA 2K. Now, that is the one saving grace, is we don't know yet what how the NBA 2K game is going to turn out. They have announced it as 2K18. So if it is on par, and you know, yes, everyone, we know it can't technically be on par 100% visually. Right, right. But, but... if it is on par gameplay-wise with the other versions, okay. I will happily support 2 k if they do that. Because, I, one, I, I love NBA games. Two, take it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And three, Milwaukee Bucks, baby. Oh, yeah. 
Come on, they, they should be pretty good rated. Giannis might even be a 90 plus now. That'd be sweet. Um, so anyways, this frustrates me on many levels, and I think it's understandable because I like EA games. I, I, I know some people are, oh, EA is all evil. All corporations are evil. You want to get into the, some of the bad the bad things in Nintendo's closet? Do we really need to get into that? <laughs> I mean, some of you guys think Nintendo's perfect. Trust me, they they have some skeletons hey, in the closet. you never know. That could be a, a future topic here. <laughs> Nintendo skeletons, a whole podcast. Oh, my God, there's hey, so many dislikes and hey, hate. You know? <laughs> um, but EA has a lot of games I like. I love the Dragon Age series. I love Mass Effect. I love pretty much anything Bioware makes, I really, really like. Even Andromeda, which ended up being kind of a letdown, is still a solid game. It's just not as good as the as the trilogy of Mass Effect. Um, you know, Dead Space 6, even though that got the series kind of canned and was more action-oriented and microtransaction-y, it was still fun. It was still a good game. I obviously play Madden every year. Mm-hmm. I like FIFA. I don't buy it every year, but I like it. Oh, yeah. Um, I enjoy just a lot of things EA makes. And we found out a long time ago that EA, Activision, and Ubisoft, and maybe a couple other companies that were hinted but not confirmed, were partners with Nintendo when the hardware was being made. Okay, So they basically gave feedback and suggestions on what they wanted out of Nintendo's hardware as it was in development. So they knew more about that hardware than anyone but Nintendo and NVIDIA knew before it came out. So EA has known what the specs of this thing, that it was basically going to be a Tegra X1 for a long time. They've known. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm sure Capcom was involved too, because Capcom are, are this, is the reason the Switch has four gigabytes of RAM instead of two, because there was only going to be two gigabytes of RAM in there, and the Capcom gave like, hey, our engines need at least four. Yeah. So then Nintendo was like, eh, it's a little pricey. All right, we'll do it. Yeah. Because they wanted to satisfy third parties. That, that's, right, right. that's one thing that we do know Nintendo did with this, is they did reach out. Like In the past, Nintendo's been accused of, oh, they don't reach out to third parties to see what they want, which was totally true of Wii U, totally true of Wii, probably even true of GameCube. I mean, third parties would have easily told them, no, don't, don't do mini discs. No. Yeah. No, that's dumb. We don't want that. Right, right. But Nintendo reached out to third parties and said, look, we're making the system that, that connects to the TV, you can take with you, and it's going to use cartridges. That's not debatable. Mm-hmm. But we're flexible on what you want on the system. Do you want paid online? Do you want a cut of the paid online? I'm sure. We're sure we'll find out down the line that the whole reason that Nintendo is going to have paid online on here is because EA and other companies said, we want you to have paid online. Like, I'm sure EA might have even talked to Nintendo while bringing the vault over. Because the, the vault right now, the EA vault on Xbox One is really cool. You spend, like, I think it's like you can spend all at once. I think you can buy it for 50 bucks a year or it's like, Eight, five bucks a month or something like that and you get access to all of their old library of games basically from six months and prior so like madden come like six months after it comes out it's in the vault you could play the new version of madden huh. uh you could i can go play dragon age right now i can go play battlefront i can go play a whole bunch of the games that they've released over the past few years for relatively cheap and it's just a subscription fee you pay every month it's really what we want nintendo to do with virtual console to be honest right um but that's another topic for another day. It's a topic we've talked about before. We'll see what they do. With, we, once they announce Virtual Console with Switch, we'll actually have a discussion then on what, what they're doing and what we wish they were doing. But this is very upsetting because I don't want half-assed on Switch. Yeah, I didn't, no, want, I didn't no. want it on Wii U. Yeah, like, if you can't give us the full version of FIFA, even if it's not... We're not talking about visuals, just gameplay-wise. If you can't give us that, is it safe for me to be like, "Fuck you, EA"? Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to apologize for my language. Yeah, no. I know. Like, I, I never said this was a family-friendly podcast. So, I mean, we try to keep it. That yeah, way, but, but it's not guaranteed. But I, I, I don't give a fuck right now. I am that pissed that. We know what's going to happen. The game's not going to sell well because it's going to play like shit. It's going to have bad reviews, and. EA is going to come out months later when people are asking, hey, is FIFA coming next year? Or is Madden coming? Or is this coming? And when EA says, well, we don't believe there's an audience for our games on that platform, we're gonna, and they're going to cite this EA Sports FIFA on Switch game, and everyone's going to be like, we've never gotten a real game from Right, you. yeah, give us a full version of No old versions, FIFA. no portable versions, no right. Vita version ported it over. We want actual fifa and the thing is it's not like the visuals in fifa are so intense during gameplay that you can't have that right. the visuals in fifa look impressive when you're doing the up close stuff right the cutscenes, the celebrations that's fine if the visuals aren't going to be as good for that 
The actual gameplay looks like a bunch of dots on a field kicking a ball around. Right. You can't tell me the Switch can't do that. We've seen games that are more impressive looking than FIFA already on it, and that's Breath of the Wild, and that's a Wii U game. <laughs> right. So FIFA is not like this massive masterpiece of visual fidelity that they cannot possibly bring it over. NBA 2K18. That's right. 2K18 is coming to the, is to the system. Yeah. Now, we don't know... If there's anything cut out of it, we're hoping not. We're assuming not because 2K always does usually a fantastic job right, with their, right. their stuff. Um, I know they kind of started letting down with the baseball game once MLB The Show came along, and now they don't even make one anymore. But whatever. They're not perfect. No one is. But when they bring their game to systems, they don't fuck around. Mm-hmm. So 2K is going to be bringing probably the full version of 2K18. And 2K18 is some of the most impressive. Well, the 2K series in general for NBA has some of the most impressive visuals. Cause they rescan players' faces every year. They update the fidelity. You can see beads of sweat and pores mm-hmm. even opening up as they play throughout the game. You can actually see players physically get tired. It's not just a right, meter. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually tell they're tired. Uh, it's really cool. And they always have pretty good crowd animations. And it's yeah. like, they can do that. And right. they're bringing it to Switch. Right. I mean, what we saw in the footage of NBA 2K that probably was last year's version in the commercials for the Switch already looks more impressive than most FIFA games. Right. So Actually, I think if... Searching today for topics and stuff like that, I actually think I saw some some pictures of 2K18 NBA, and my God. Oh yeah, well, I, gotta, I don't think it's not going to look as good as those pictures. Those are probably like PS4 Pro, Xbox Scorpio. Yeah, PC, but still, either way, because they're going to make they're going to release like the best looking possible ones. Right, but this was also I think on Nintendo everything, so it might be. Well, that. Yeah. I don't know. See, I don't know how. Well, Nintendo that's the thing. No, that's their news. Well, but. they they post basically anything and. 2K18 is coming to it, so any news for 2K18 is news for Nintendo fans. Like, right, oh, look, there's right. new screenshots for it. But we don't, you know, true, do we know where true. they came okay. from? That's Are they bull true. shots? Um, either way, it's probably going to look pretty good. I don't. Obviously, we are not talking about the Switch's ability to produce the same visual fidelity as a PS4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio, even an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. I don't think any Switch. I think all Switch owners understand it's a portable system. We don't expect it to be as good. But we expect the gameplay to be as good, and there's no oh, excuse. Sure. Yeah. Have you seen the physics engine in Breath of the Wild? Okay, if they can do that on Wii U, they can handle FIFA physics. Mm-hmm. They can handle Madden physics. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, this it, it, is... It, there's, it's not like these these physics engines, I think, are you know anywhere near as extensive as, as Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is physics. crazy. Yeah. I've never seen a game that has that kind of... Like, I've seen individual aspects of those physics in other games, but this is, like, everything together. It's crazy. Now, I know, compar- comparing that kind of game to sports games, I get it. People don't like that. But here's my, here's just where I think this is all asinine, is Nintendo Switch is really popular right now. Uh, there was just an article up on MLB.com from this past week where on Tuesday, I believe there was a rain delay. And the Braves were playing Nintendo Switch and playing Mario Kart for the three hours and 12 minute rain delay. Very nice. Yeah. And this wasn't a paid advertisement by Nintendo. And the reason you know it's not a paid advertisement by Nintendo is because they called it the Nintendo Wii Switch and they called it like Mario Kart Racing or something instead of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Nintendo, if it was a Nintendo paid oh, one, yeah, they sure. would have had all the official terms and oh, proper yeah. linkage. And yeah. So like this was just, hey, they noticed some people were playing Mario Kart and they asked them about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So... You have the Switch out in the mainstream, basically. When you start seeing athletes talking about it, and there was a picture of a soccer team in the UK on a bus that were playing it, like it's hitting mainstream success right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, now, sure. whether or not it maintains that, who knows? But right now, when athletes are starting to advertise it without being paid to do it, because they're just playing it and enjoying it, and casual people follow athletes and be like, oh, man, what is that they're playing? They're playing Mario Kart? Who plays Mario Kart? And I'm like, wait a second, a Switch? Yep. What the heck is that? Wait, wait, well, and then all of a sudden you see the people on on the bus holding these devices saying, hey, look, we're playing with our Nintendo Switches. Mm-hmm. People are going to go to the store and say, hey, can I get that Nintendo Switch that oh, my favorite sure. player is playing? How much is it? Right. What is it? What games does it have? People start getting interested because people they do follow are into it. Because a, a lot of you know general consumers do not follow, say, us. Nintendo right. Prime or Nintendo everything. Which they or should. IGN. I mean, they should, but <laughs> whatever. They they follow sports teams. They follow music. They follow this and that. Everyone's got all their different tastes. And when those people start getting into it, that tells me that there is something here. 
Well, and I know a lot of those sports figures also like to play sports games because yes, you see do. it all over the place they where do. they're like, "Yeah, we just had a man tournament, you know. Yeah. I played myself. You yeah. know, why not? Yeah, the soccer teams. Yeah, we played FIFA on the team plane. Except, yeah. except they couldn't, and now they can. But it's gonna be a shitty version of FIFA, right? That's my point. There is an audience for these games, especially these sports games. Oh, yeah. And they are screwing well, the pooch right now with it. I mean... Potentially. Sport, again, yes, again, right. again. You know, disclaimer, we haven't seen it. We don't know. But the fact that it's listed separately, separately from FIFA yep. 18 is a pretty big indication it is not FIFA 18. I mean, I don't know how you can think that there's not a... a, a uh, it's probably a play version that's Walsh and controlled, I bet. <laughs> oh, God. Sure. They probably just but, ported the fucking Wii version. Not even the Wii U. The Wii version. Yeah. And went all arcade, arcade style with it and gave you updated rosters. Ugh. With zero updates, zero DLC, zero anything. With really shitty visuals. And I say oh. that because, remember, we have seen the game running on Switch officially. One time. They had a commercial for it. Yep. Yeah, I believe it was in the UK or in Japan. And the visuals looked like shit. They looked yeah. like GameCube level visuals. Right, right. And I'm sorry... We've seen better already on the Switch. Oh, yeah. So this is where I get worried because it basically, when I when I see EA Sports FIFA on Nintendo Switch separate from FIFA 18, then that doesn't tell me that EA put their B team on it. They put, like, their D team. A oh, bunch of rejects yeah. that, that probably just usually handle porting games. Probably interns. There's probably interns that did it. Not, and, nothing against and, interns, and, but... And I'm not trying to insult the people that made it because... We haven't seen it. We don't know. Maybe it ends up being really impressive. But if it's so impressive, it shouldn't be separate from FIFA 18 in the first right. place. It, it, it's one of those things that EA is fucking people over. And the problem is the rest of the injury will use this as an example of, oh, FIFA didn't sell, so why should we release our game? Why should Assassin's Creed come to the game? Saying, well, they can't right. even sell FIFA. Most popular game in the world, we can't. they can't sell it on the right. system, so why should we bring Assassin's Creed? The only reason why I, th- I could think that if it was a good game, and the reason why they're calling it, you know, FIFA 18 Switch version, is to point out the fact that they are on a Nintendo console. Yeah. But th- but that's about Who the only reason, you know, because they don't. Are we, have... are we going Super Mario Brothers U style here? Hey, we we got to put the console name in the you know, game title. It's you know what I'm saying though, because EA hasn't really been on Nintendo consoles, so it's gonna be like, hey, we finally have one for you. So here it is. That's about the only way I can see that it being any sort of positive. I don't even think it's a positive. Well, right, I mean, but, it, yeah. it is if it ends up being FIFA 18 and they just don't call it FIFA 18. But I think that's just brand confusion. Wait, so it's FIFA 18, but it's not called FIFA 18. So is it FIFA 18? That's what consumers are going to be like. Yeah. Oh, this is FIFA for Nintendo Switch. So is this the new FIFA? Is that the old FIFA? Yeah. What the, What the hell is it? Is it not FIFA 18 for the Switch, or is it just FIFA for the Switch? It just says EA. Here, I'll show you. Okay. Show you right here in the oh, yeah, right right there in the press release. It it says literally EA Sports FIFA on Nintendo Switch. Oh, versus FIFA 18 above it. Oh hey, how about that? That's why I'm saying, and they're even throwing the EA Sports title in it. Oh boy. If it's okay. literally titled EA Sports presents FIFA on Nintendo Switch. Or even a big giant Nintendo Switch logo on some guy's jersey or whatever. It's like, oh. you're stupid. You're missing. So so actually, that lends itself actually to me more towards a older version because of the fact that it's not labeled 18. It's FIFA, which means it could be FIFA 15. It could be FIFA 14. It could be none of them. It could be none of them. Yeah, exactly. It, it could just be some new, oh, we want to try some new play style because of the... HD Rumble and this and that. Like, I think you're missing the fucking point. Yes. People buy FIFA for fo- for sports simulation soccer. If you're going to provide anything that's not sports simulation <laughs> soccer, nobody fucking wants it. Right. Release a totally different game and, like NBA Playgrounds is and call it something else. Call it, you know, Major League Soccer or whatever or, you know, whatever. Come up with some funny name like Playgrounds for it. Yeah, you know, like like NFL Blitz. Like, come up with a name that clearly does not mean sports simulation. FIFA is associated with sports simulation, right? Exactly. So again, maybe we're overreacting because we haven't seen it, but history has shown when EA does this, or even when they don't do it, because they called it back when uh, FIFA 12 came out in 2012. Mm-hmm. They called it FIFA 2012, but it wasn't. It was FIFA 2011 with uh with the FIFA 12 logo, <laughs> right? So. 
yeah, maybe it's a good sign because they're not calling it FIFA 18 when it's really FIFA 17 ported. <laughs> right. I don't know, maybe, it, I don't know. It just, it upsets me, not because that this game's going to get screwed around with it. Maybe you guys don't care about FIFA, but it has a larger scope picture for the way third parties are continuing to treat Nintendo. I'm hoping that 2K18 for NBA comes out and proves it wrong and proves, hey, look, I hope it's like the counterpunch. Here's EA just being lazy fuckers, not spending any money producing a shit game. And then here comes NBA 2K in. And look, NBA 2K ends up selling $2 million on the console and proves, holy fuck, there's people that will buy it if you actually make a good fucking game. Well, right. And again, I, like I was going to say before, um, I don't know how they think that there's not a sports market because sports altogether is easily a, what, a multi-billion dollar industry? Oh, easily. With all of the four major sports and, and and soccer included, well, then you're definitely multi billion dollars. So, I, and how many fans watch that? I mean, and Ninten- how is there Nintendo not owned an a majority stake of the Seattle Mariners for right. how long? Right. How is there not an audience? How is there not a baseball game? Nintendo would have had literally a whole baseball stadium that's on national TV to advertise a baseball game. <laughs> right. I don't know. Like, I don't. Nintendo's not going to make it themselves. But hey, two K. If your game sells well, maybe you should knock on Nintendo's door and be like, hey, look, you know what, MLB show this exclusive for Sony? How about we bring back our 2K baseball game exclusive for you guys? Now, Grant, they right. do not own, they still do own a stake in Seattle Mariners. It's just not a majority anymore. Right. I think they only own 10%. But I'm sure with that 10%, they could be like, hey, look, can we advertise oh, I'm sure. a baseball game I'm at the baseball stadium I'm for the sure Switch? I'm sure that the Seattle Mariners would allow that. Yeah. They might even build a separate room with <laughs> Switches in it that can, you can just Because the 10% play. stake still gives you some say. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Nintendo is not, not going to get, you know, they don't well, get final approval, it, but it, it, and come on. It's also, Nintendo. Who's going to say no to exactly, making money? that's what I was going to say. Because Nintendo will probably be like, we can give you a couple mil. Like, I mean, for some odd reason, if let's say you and I were to actually own 10% for some odd reason, we're not Nintendo. No. Who's going to say no to Nintendo? I mean. Well, it, well no, I mean, unless, it right, unless it doesn't right, make sense. Unless it doesn't make sense. But Like, it doesn't make sense to have Mario mascot running around every game anymore because right, they don't own it. Right, you know. exactly. But it still makes sense to do some things with Nintendo. Nintendo should be able to leverage that 10% for advertising. Right. Um, especially if it doesn't take away money from the team. Exactly. So, anyways, I just think, and I think a lot of you guys are going to agree. Yes, this is EA being fucking EA, <laughs> and as, as for every good thing they do and every positive step they take and the games I like from them, they always seem to fuck over Nintendo fans. Um, you know, the Mass Effect 3 port was, was not good. The, you know, FIFA and Madden were shit. Like, we got treated like shit on Wii U, got treated like shit on Wii. You know, they, they gave us arcade-style Madden, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what, Just what release this, NFL fucking Blitz. Is this the 64? Oh, let me... Oh, it's motion control. It's not arcade. I'm like, really? My characters look like NFL Blitz characters. Yeah, right. It's fucking arcade. Oh, definitely. Um, I, I, I'm just very upset about it. Not just because EA, because as I said, EA started it on Wii U, and that bought, that made other third parties believe their games were not going to sell because EA's games didn't sell. Right. When EA never once, not one time on Wii U, despite that unprecedented partnership, actually put full effort into a game. Mm-hmm. Now Ubisoft did. Zombie U was one hundred percent like a, a nice studio, and Zombie U sold almost a million copies. Right, and that was at launch. And this is more popular than the Wii U at launch. So in mm-hmm. theory, if they did that again, it would sell well. Assassin's Creed Three and Assassin's Creed Four ran pretty well on Wii U. Unfortunately, the Wii U was tanky, right. so there ended up not being a very good audience. Right, but this is a different story now. Mm-hmm. Because people didn't see a reason to own Wii U, and they could just buy a better system for the same price. Yeah. Now you can buy a better system for the same price, but you can't take that system with you. You can take exactly, this with yeah. you. That taking with you factor is what's getting at all this pub right now by all these sports figures. Mm-hmm. So now's the time you take advantage of it and actually release good fucking sports games. Right. So again, I'm not. I'm frustrated because I want good sports games, but I'm also frustrated because I think this is going to make other companies. Ubisoft is going to look at them and be like, oh. So that didn't sell well. Our uh, Rabbids Mario crossover just did so mm-hmm. so because yeah. people didn't care about Rabbids or whatever, right. and they just it wasn't too too much not like Mario. So that didn't do very well because it's just a weird crossover. And so now, okay, so sports games aren't selling. We tr- we tried working directly with Nintendo. That didn't sell. Well, we're done. We're not bringing Assassin's Creed. We're not bringing mm-hmm. this. We're not bringing that. Right. And it's like 
That's so stupid. Yeah. If someone could just put, you know, and that's why I keep looking. To, I mean, I'm putting a lot of pressure on 2K here. If you put 100 percent effort into 2K18 mm-hmm. and it doesn't sell, okay, then yeah, okay, then you can. Then, make then now we have an example of a game that right. was given where where a team put their A team on it, right, and it didn't work. It didn't. It didn't move units. Um, now, question for you though: If you were Nintendo, would you go to EA and go, no? We're not putting this in our system. You give us what everybody else is getting. Not anymore. There was a time they would. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nintendo used to have a, even a strict policy like Xbox has. You know, I think Xbox is, is relaxing on it now, but Xbox used to have a parity clause. You must release the game at the same time as every other system. Well, you know, and I think the thing is, is I think Switch players would understand if you went and said, hey, look, we are bringing this to the system. But we want to make sure that this is the same game. Well, then they'd be okay with that. Your prime example, Rhyme came out today. The day we're recording this, Rhyme came yep. out. It is not out on Switch yet. It is coming at a later date. Switch owners aren't... Here's the thing. It's actually getting really good reviews. It's like 9s and 10s. Yeah. We're talking like Breath of the Wild territory. Wow. Right now for reviews. Um, but it is... Not on Switch yet, and they released a tweet today. You know, they're like, hey, look, we told you it wasn't going to be there. We do apologize it's not here yet, but it's coming. We're getting close. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it might not be here now. It'll probably be here next month. But we know. We understand. One, they're an indie studio, so we know they only have so many resources. So, like, you know, know, they were making this game before Switch was even a thing, so, you know, they haven't had as much time to develop. But what we do know, the fact that it's being delayed, is that means their A-team is on it. Oh, yeah. It's not some hired-out studio doing it it's them being like no we want to make sure it's done right We're, we want right. to do right exactly by the we don't want to release an inferior version of the game right and, and as nintendo you know going back and saying hey look yes we want we want fifa on this console but we want to bring it to you right and ea was not going to bring it to you right so we're going to tell them no until they you won't. bring this back they won't because ea will just be like well if that's the case we're just not going to bring fifa and Nintendo knows they make a royalty on those sales. So someone's going to buy FIFA. It's not going to get zero sales. Mm, yeah. And it doesn't cost Nintendo anything. So say say they release it. It sucks. It only sells 100,000 copies. Nintendo was no risk there. They just made money off 100,000 copies that if they say no, they don't get any of that money. Whereas EA probably didn't even make their money back on the investment of the 100,000 copies. Yeah. So it's... It's a conundrum. Nintendo used to be uh, Toltarian like that uh, back in the NES, basically through the GameCube days. This is actually why third parties left Nintendo. Is when the NES broke out, the problem in the games industry is there was no filter. Okay, the platform holders basically let any game under the sun come out on their system, right? And it flooded the market. And it's not that it flooded the market. You know, like the, you can argue the markets be flooded today thanks to indie games, but it flooded it in a way where it was very hard to find the good games. Mm-hmm. So you bought a new Atari twenty six hundred, and the first four games you buy for the thing all suck donkey shit, and it felt like you wasted over a thousand bucks. You're done. Mm-hmm. You're not into gaming anymore, right. and that happened because no one knew what the good games were because video games were still a relatively new thing right. outside of arcades. Right. Yeah, but they're they're not now. No, so, no, but yeah. like so, Nintendo came in and like look. We're gonna pre. We're, you need to go through a strict approval process with us. Basically, your game is not coming on the system until we play it and we say it's coming out. Right. And Nintendo rejected tons of games. That doesn't mean there weren't bad games on NES. There were bad oh, games right. that made it yeah. through, probably because of money reasons. Especially a lot of the movie games that came through. A lot of those sucked. Oh yeah. I mean, it is what it is. So, but reality is, it wasn't hard to find good games. Nintendo mm-hmm. set it up in yeah. a way where the stores had the good games in the front, not the back. Right. And it wasn't just Nintendo games. They had quality third-party games. The same with the SNES. And then by the time the PlayStation came out, uh, it started getting to the point where not only was Nintendo a little bit behind the ball because PlayStation had higher quality for cheaper with the CDs and with the music quality and stuff like that and the fact that it could play DVDs, which was right. huge. Right. Um, but also the fact that Nintendo was still holding to the we need to strictly approve everything before mm-hmm. it comes out on our platform. And Sony's just like, dude, have a game, bring it. Yeah. We're not going to stop you. Right. Which was what, and the scary, and Nintendo's like, no, we were in the right because we went through this. This is why the industry crashed was people doing this. Well, it's not like Sony just went back to the Stone Ages. Mm-hmm. Sony still put their games front and center, which meant that people, when they bought the system, could quickly find quality games from Sony. Right. Or from their Sony partners. So, like, that, and, and that's kind of the way that it is now. When you go in the Nintendo eShop, 
right now on the Switch, there are some bad indie games on there. Yeah. But the great indie games are right there front and center. Snake Pass. Yeah. You know, uh, what's it? Thumper. Thumper's amazing, by the way. Um, you know how, like, HD Rumble was kind of cool in 1-2-Switch? Mm-hmm. They actually haven't played one two switch. Okay, well it's it's kind of cool. It makes sense a little bit. Yeah, uh, like you can feel the balls and everything. Like, yeah, it's neat. When you play Thumper, oh my god, it makes you wonder why HD Rumble hasn't been here forever. Huh. Like it actually proves what HD Rumble can add to a video game. It's it's, nice. it's such a nice. crazy game. As long as you don't get, but, as long as you can handle like bright lights and don't get seizures, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's a okay. crazy fun game. Okay. Um, but anyways, it, it's it's just frustrating. I'm just frustrated. Oh, that, that's just the way they put it. I'm frustrated. I'm hoping that we're wrong. Oh, I am too. But this is EA and we're probably Oh, no. And I think people for, saw this coming. Not only because they didn't call it FIFA 18 when oh, they announced it, it's, but because also the one time we saw it, it didn't look good, and you're just like, come on. It, it's pattern recognition. It, it, it's not like, like, come on, man. We until, know it can be done better. Until EA does something different. Why expect there's there's different? a reason there's a reason that the other soccer games were selling better than FIFA even on 3ds. Oh yeah, because they actually put effort into their fucking games. PES, it was their A team making that 3ds game. It wasn't oh, yeah. fucking yeah. D team hired out for four months. Mm-hmm. 